Hello everybody, Mrs. Kip from Syracuse Academy of Science and Citizenship back again with part two of Hansel and Gretel. So, so far in Hansel and Gretel, we have heard that times are hard. Hansel and Gretel live with their father and their stepmother. There's not enough food for everybody. So their stepmother, who is rotten, comes up with a plan that they're going to leave the kids in the woods um, and hopefully the kids won't be able to find their way home so the father and the stepmother can eat Hansel and Gretel's share of the food. Well, Hansel and Gretel overhear their plan and Hansel collects a bunch of pebbles and leaves a trail as they're walking from the house to the woods so him and Gretel find their way back to the house um, they get back to the house. The father's happy to see them. The stepmother acts surprised. Um, and like she's happy to see them even though she really wasn't. And a few weeks go by. Times are tough again. They have even less food. So the stepmother convinces the dad we're going to do the same plan. But this time we're going to leave them even farther into the woods. And she locks the door so Hansel can't go out and collect pebbles to make a pathway to find his way back home again. So now they left them in the woods. Hansel was leaving a trail of breadcrumbs so they could follow that to get back home because he didn't have a chance to collect pebbles. But the problem is now birds ate the breadcrumbs so they have no path to follow. They're trying to find their way back home. It's been days. They're starving. They're lost. And they're not home. So now we need to find out what happens next. I'm excited. I hope they find their way home. But I don't really want the stepmother to be there when they get home. And the dad seems to love his kids, but he's also letting the stepmom convince him to leave him in the woods. So I don't really know how I feel about him either, but it's a fairy tale. It should have a happy ending. So that's what I'm hoping for. All right. Our objectives for today are to demonstrate familiarity with the fairy tale Hansel and Gretel, identify the fairy tale elements of Hansel and Gretel, identify fairy tales as a type of fiction, Identify common characteristics of fairy tales such as once upon a time, beginnings, royal characters, elements of fantasy, problems and solutions, and happy endings. I'm really hoping for a happy ending here. I'm getting nervous. Things aren't looking good. All right. Here's Hansel and Gretel lost in the woods. It was now the third morning since they had left their father's house. They started along again, always looking for a way home, but instead of going deeper into the forest, unless help came soon, they would surely starve. At about noon, they saw a pretty white snowbird sitting on a branch and singing so beautifully that they stopped to listen. Then the bird spread its wings and flew before them as though to say, follow me. And so the children followed the bird until they came to a little house. The bird flew up and perched on the roof, and then the children saw that the walls of the house were made of gingerbread, and the roof was made of cake, and the windows were made of clear sugar candy. It's my kind of house. Look at that. Ooh, somebody's in the window. Let's eat, cried Hansel. Hansel reached up and broke off a piece of candy while Gretel chewed on a piece of the wall. Suddenly, they heard a thin, screechy woman's voice call out from inside the house. Nibble, nibble, nibble like a mouse. Who is nibbling at my house? The children answered, It's only the air heaving a sigh. It's only the wind passing by. I'm trying to trick her. The children were so hungry, they went on eating, but then the door opened and a very old woman came out, leaning on a cane. Hansel and Gretel were so frightened that they dropped the food from their hands, 
But the old woman just nodded her head and said, My dear little children, what has brought you here? Come inside and stay with me. I'll take good care of you. Do you think that's a good idea to go inside with a woman you don't know? Probably not. So she took them by the hand and led them into her little house. There they found a wonderful meal of hot pancakes with honey, nuts, apples, and cold milk. After that, the old woman showered the two, showed them two little white beds, and Hansel and Gretel lay down and wondered if they were just dreaming. Now the old woman seemed kind, but in fact she was a wicked witch. Wicked means bad or very mean. The story goes that she built her house just to trap little children. And once she had them, she would cook them and eat them. What? So she could not see well, but she had an excellent sense of smell. Earlier in the day, she had sniffed Hansel and Gretel coming near. Just when I thought it was good news. It was, it's not, it's bad news. The next morning, before the children were awake, the witch got up and looked at those rosy cheeks. Mmm, what a fine meal I will have, she cackled. Then she got Hansel out of bed and put him in the cage. Then she went back and woke up Gretel and shouted, Get up, you lazy bones. Fetch water and cook something nice for your brother. Feed him well, for once he's nice and fat, I will eat him. Jeez. Gretel screamed and cried, but it was just no use. She had to do what the Wicked Witch said. Day after day, she cooked pots full of rich food for Hansel while she sat herself and ate nothing but crumbs. Every morning, the Wicked Witch would creep to the cage and say, Hansel, stick out your finger so I can tell if you are plump enough to cook. But clever Hansel held out a little bone that Gretel had given him and the old woman, who could not see very well, couldn't tell that it wasn't Hansel's finger. She wondered why he wasn't getting any plumper. When four weeks passed and Hansel seemed as thin as ever, the witch grew impatient. Hurry up and get a pot of water, she snarled. Be he fat or thin, I'm going to cook him and eat him. She's got a house made of candy. Why does she need to eat? Hansel. As she filled the kettle with water and lit the fire, tears ran down Gretel's cheeks. First, we will bake, said the old woman. I've heated the oven and the dough is ready. Then she pushed Gretel towards the oven where the flames were burning brightly. Stick your head in, the witch said, the witch said to Gretel, and tell me if it's hot enough for us to bake the bread. But Gretel knew what the witch had in mind. She knew that the witch meant to shut her in the oven, bake her, and eat her. So Gretel said, I don't know how to do it. Where do I look? Could you show me? You silly child, cried the old woman. There's a big opening, don't you see? Why, I could fit in myself. And she stuck her head in the oven. Then Gretel rushed up and with all of her might pushed the witch into the oven. She shut the, she shut the iron door and locked it tight. Gretel ran right to Hansel and let him out of the cage. Way to go, Gretel. She was clever. Come, Hansel, we're free, she cried. The old witch is gone. Hansel sprang out and hugged Gretel, and the children danced for joy and ran out of the house. Then, because they had nothing to fear, they went back into the witch's house. There they found chests of pearls and precious jewels. These are better than pebbles, laughed Hansel as she filled her pockets and Gretel filled her apron. Now away we go, said Hansel. Then they said quietly, if only we can find our way out of the forest. Where do you think they're going? When they had walked a few hours, they came to a wide lake. There's no bridge and no stepping stone, said Hansel. We can't get across. 
and there's no boat either, said Gretel. But look, she said, here comes a duck. I will ask for help. So she called out, duck, duck, here we stand, Hansel and Gretel on land, stepping stones and a bridge we lack. Carry us over on your nice, soft back. And lo and behold, the duck came over. Hansel got on her back and told Gretel to sit behind. Do you think a duck could really carry two kids across a pond? I don't think so. When they were on the other side of the lake, they walked on for a little while and soon found a path. The forest began to look more and more familiar. At last, in the distance, they saw their father's house. They began to run as fast as they could. They burst through the door and cried out, Father, we're home, then threw themselves into his arms. The father will be happy to see them? I think so. Ever since he had left the children alone in the forest, the man had been worried sick. As for the mean wife, he told the children she was gone. Now he hugged his children as though he would never let them go. As he squeezed Gretel to him, the pearls and jewels fell from Gretel's apron. Then Hansel reached out his pockets and pulled out handful and handful of treasures. They were together again, their troubles were over, and they lived in perfect happiness for a long, long time. Well, that was a happy ending, and the stepmother's gone, so that's good news. And now they have all this treasure, so they should be able to buy more food, I hope. Or maybe they could go back and live in the witch's house that's made of gingerbread and candy. That sounds good to me. All right, let's go over some comprehension questions and that'll be it for today. All right. In the beginning of part two, Hansel and Gretel are lost in the woods. How do they end up finding the old woman's house? They followed the white bird that they had stopped and listened to it singing. And then the bird perched on top of the old woman's house. So that's how they found the old woman's house. How would you describe the outside of the old woman's house? What was it made of? The walls of the house were made of gingerbread. The roof was made of cake and the windows were made of clear sugar candy. Yum. What new problem do Hansel and Gretel have after arriving at the woman's house? Remember, she feeds them a bunch of pancakes and delicious food, but then they have a problem. She tells them she plans to eat them. That's a big problem. Do you think what happens in this fairy tale could really happen? Or is it most likely make-believe or fantasy? And how do you know? Could the things that we heard in this story really happen? Or is it make-believe? This is a fantasy or make-believe. There are no wicked witches. Uh, people don't eat children. Children can't ride on a duck's back. There was a whole bunch of stuff in here that couldn't really happen. What does Gretel do to trick the wicked witch once she realizes the witch is planning to cook her too? Remember, Gretel tricks the witch into sticking her own head in the oven to see if it's warm enough. And then Gretel pushes the wicked witch in the oven and locks the door. What do the children do once the wicked witch is gone?
where they take all the pearls and precious jewelry that they find in the witch's house and they set back off into the woods. They find the duck, they cross the lake on his back and then they find their way home. And when they get home, the mean stepmother's gone. Now they have all the precious jewels and treasure that they took from the witch's house and now they won't be struggling with their dad anymore and they can all eat. So it was a happy ending. All right, an important vocabulary word we learned from today was the word creep. In the read aloud we heard, every morning the wicked witch would creep to Hansel's cage. Creep means to move slowly and quietly. When my cat comes in late at night, she will creep into a corner so we don't notice her. Can you think of an example when you would creep quietly? What would be a time that you would want to creep quietly? Sometimes I creep quietly past my son's room. He's two years old if he's sleeping because I don't want to wake him up. Or maybe I would creep up on somebody so I could jump out and scare him quickly. Um, sometimes animals creep if they're trying to be quiet so they can you know, get up close to whatever prey they're hunting so they don't hear them coming and then they can pounce on them and get them. And that's it for today. Tomorrow we start a new story and it is Jack and the Beanstalk. I can't wait for that. Have a great rest of the day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.